Okay, hello everyone. This is Puri Adif Shali from VTT and thank you for this uh, opportunity. So first I want to say that this COSI uh, project, co-simulation model for safety and reliability of electrical system in flexible environment of nuclear power plant start years ago and SEPO as uh, mentioned before, uh, uh, I start this job, but due that uh, he is going to the retired. Uh, actually, he retired already, uh, so I will continue uh, this project. Uh, thanks, Sepo, for uh, what he did until now, and it's mostly uh, regarding the achievement of the project. It's in these two years, and hopefully, the project will be continue for next uh, two years as well. And this project is uh, collaboration between Alto and VTT. Uh, you don't see any more my most probably okay. Uh, nuclear power plant is combination of uh, several system. Uh, we will have we have the. Uh, all this thermomechanical uh, simulation and the nuclear reaction. We have uh, this electrical, internal electrical system that provide the energy for the all uh, reaction inside the nuclear power plant, like the large motors and etc. And we have this uh, higher voltage transmission system that the generator of power plant is connected to that and provide the energy in the normal case for internal uh, power system. So the uh, challenge is these uh, three different system are uh, highly connected to each others. Uh, for example, in internal grid, uh, this uh, thermomechanical system has some large pump that uh, get energy from electrical system and they are coupled together or in the same way, uh, this generator and turbine set connect this thermomechanical system to the high voltage transmission system. And through this transformer, these two electrical system are connected to each other. But until now, how this uh, simulation model uh, handle this uh, connected system, it's they decoupled that. In the mean that when we want to uh, simulate the electrical system, for example, the internal system, we put one uh, motor, like for example, it's a symbol in the uh, MATLAB Simulink, and we create this, uh, usually what is created, this uh, feedback that has this uh, simple equation, K, uh, the torque, it's uh, proportional to uh, speed square. It means we uh, how the model hold this uh, thermomechanical system goes to the one simple uh, coefficient. So it's how we uh, normally until now that the electrical system inside the uh, power plant is simulated. And in the same way for hold this uh, higher voltage system, they use the uh, kind of one uh, ideal or Thevenin equivalent, fixed equivalent, and uh, hold the transmission system in one fixed value there. So, on the other hand, when they want to use thermomechanical model, some maybe even advanced uh, software like App Opros, they just uh, model hold the uh, electrical system as a symmetrical, very simple model, and it cannot be uh, simulate many phenomena, events like the single phase, for example, fault or main, any asymmetrical model. So the objective of this project is to create one co-simulation platform that can 
uh, model all this uh, subsystem together and create a system to allow uh, to study the interaction between this system. It's very short of the objective of this project, and this is the different task of the project that's uh, initially designed in 2018 for uh, uh, year 2019, but uh, due to the steering group uh, opinion, there are some uh, minor change in the tax, uh, task and uh, work package list uh, every year. I just want to shortly explain how we create this uh, platform uh, and uh, in the work package one and work package two, it's using this uh, platform to do some study. So in the first work package, we need to create uh, this co-simulation platform. We should uh, focus in the area that the different uh, model are connected. Uh, for example, one of these components is the set of turbine generator. So uh, we need uh, to model the mechanical system in one simulator, for example, Opros. Uh, in the first survey of the project, we found that Opros is uh, one popular program, at least in the Nordic nuclear power plant. It's uh, widely used. So we select uh, the Opros uh, as an uh, model a simulator for the me thermomechanical system and that the, all the reaction of the nuclear parts. And uh, we need to connect this uh, to the one power system simulator. For a starting, we use the Simulink, but there is no limitation and we can, co the concept is the same and can be developed for other simulator like the PSCAT power factory uh, or uh, PSSE or whatever. So, uh, the, for example, turbine should be modeled in the APROS and the generator should be in the uh, uh, power system uh, simulator. And there is a coupling between them that uh, is that the famous uh, equation. And uh, we need, for now, both of the uh, simulator usually handle this uh, differential equation, but uh, we should deactivate one of them to uh, and allow uh, one calculate one simulator calculate the speed and transfer data to the other simulator. Same approach should be followed for the uh, pump and motors, and we need to have the pump inside the APROS and that the motor inside the power system simulator. And the coupling should be handled by one of these software. What we are uh, selected, uh, we allow that the power system simulator uh, handle this uh, equation of the speed. This uh, and uh, the reason is uh, Fort uh, Opros was developed by Fortum and uh, VTT, and we have access to the uh, code behind the, this commercial program. So we could create a op new operation mode for the all different turbine and all different pump uh, to allow the active this co-simulation and uh, getting the all data from the another software. There are more challenge in the designing the uh, co-simulation platform. I am very shortly explaining them, uh, but the method we used for this co-simulation is the open uh, method. It means that two, all different software can be run separately and they have uh, their own time step handling. And uh, so, for example, power system can run with a much smaller time step, but the thermomechanical system, maybe even one second, it's enough for many uh, of the phenomena. So uh, each software handle uh, all these things alone, uh, but 
they have a data exchange interval between two simulators that uh, we select a parallel data exchange uh, that it's faster and uh, better handling. It means if we have, for example, two simulator, uh, simulator A do the simulation itself and B do uh, its work until reaching to this uh, time interval exchange and then they interact uh, to each other, change the data and for next step, they start again with the new update data continue uh, to work. And uh, one, uh, the another issue is the protocol of the data exchange between simulator depend to the what software we are using uh, as a simulator. We have, we should use a different protocol for data exchange. Uh, here for Opros, we use the uh, Sorry, uh, open platform communication or OPC method to connect the uh, now uh, MATLAB to uh, OPROS. But if we want to, for example, for power system simulator, the Simulink is connected internally to the MATLAB, so there is no problem. But for example, for PSCAD or power factory, we need to use the other uh, protocol of the data exchange uh, that's uh, not in this project, but for example, in other projects, we use the TCP IP for connecting PSCAT to the MATLAB and this type of work can be continued in this project. What we create in here uh, as a main architecture and that the platform is based on that, we have a one master program uh, that's called different simulator. For now, master program is in the MATLAB M file system using the OPC library uh, toolbox of the MATLAB. Uh, but for example, we can develop later in the Python as a more general and free license things. Uh, not the software is not licensed, but I means that the MATLAB license. And connect to the uh, OPROS and the uh, um, master uh, program. Sorry, my mouse has some challenge today. And uh, we ha this master program uh, are resp is responsible for handling the exchange uh, time step and uh, exchange protocol and all this practical uh, challenge of course simulation and connecting the different uh, simulator. So, uh, and another challenge is about the data, each simulator should has the start from the initialized data and that's co-simulation will continue after this initialized endpoint and we allow us to study some events. Just as a proof of concept, I um, have a, a small system, a generator, two different uh, motor here that's as a represent the internal grid of the uh, nuclear power plant this generator as representer of the main generator of power plant and here the representer of the uh, higher voltage as a very simple one to show the proof of concept that's working and we've put uh, one uh, three phase uh, for a starting uh, faults and uh, we have a simple system in the Opros that it has a turbine uh, connected to this shaft that this shaft through this master program, it's connected to that generator on Simulink. And this uh, two pump is uh, kind of connected virtually to that uh, motor of the uh, Simulink. So, uh, this is a schematic of the master program in the M file. That's uh, and now we can see, for example, after the fault, the voltage in the motor terminal is dropped, and this uh, change the power and speed of that same uh, pump in the Opros change the, uh, for example, uh, even the voltage and because the voltage of this uh, two motor is connected, change the uh, speed and mechanical torque of the second motor and even the mass flow inside the uh, thermomechanical system. 
and even it's seen in the generator in the uprose, in the, the turbine set in the uprose, and so on. It's showed just this uh, two cone simulation working uh, very uh, smooth and without uh, challenge. In work package two, two uh, it's the uh, Professor Mati Lehton and Feram Alto was the work package leader. Uh, I explained a bit uh, in the beginning the part that uh, VTT uh, handled that a bit, uh, and later uh, John Feram Alto continued to uh, the work, uh, the presentation. The plan for uh, 2000, uh, this work package has started in 2020 and the plan is to show the baseline simulation uh, of the this co-simulation, it means we wanted to create a baseline, a very normal SDDS uh, and one uh, working point of the nuclear power plant connected to the uh, finished transmission line. So uh, we have the uh, detailed uh, model of the nuclear power plant in the approach and create the uh, kind of detail uh, electrical system internal grid of the same power plant in the MATLAB simulink and we want to have this transmission system of Finland uh, in simulink now and connect all this uh, together and it's the aim of this work package too. So uh, what we did uh, we use the uh, Lovisa data, Lovisa 1 data from Fortum. That's, I cannot represent the detail of that. Do uh, this the confidential data, but uh, just mentioning that this part of work package to almost done, uh, it's in the last part of the implementation and there is uh, was and there was some technical challenge uh, to implement the real data a real uh, system was more complicated than the, uh, what we had in the some example so we had to develop a bit further the work package one this platform but it is going very smooth and uh, we uh, this year create this platform somehow user friendly that's uh, we need just adding some components like this for each uh, motor and generator in opros i don't go to the detail and uh, some uh, kind of input constant input with the following the structure of the naming in the matlab simulink and just then update one uh, kind of input file to the MATLAB. The input file has that only the name of this uh, component that need to be co-simulating an initial condition of them. Like here, for example, it's the genset. Uh, it means one generator with this name and this initial value. And uh, then if we run this uh, MATLAB simulink, uh, push this F5, uh, both uh, simulator run automatically uh, simultaneously and we will see the progress in each simulator. Uh, thank you and uh, John will, from Alto will uh, continue there. Okay, shall I share my screen? If yeah, you can. Okay, I'll try. Let's say stop that. Okay. Hello, yes, I'm John Miller. I'm, I'm my full name is Robert John Miller, and so sometimes on these interfaces the name Robert comes up, um, but they call me by the second name John. I've come into this project uh, in about the spring of this year, uh, basically because we couldn't get some researchers coming because of COVID, but I'm very happy to be involved in, in this area of research, which is quite new. I've been mostly dealing with distribution and underground cable rating in my research life over the last 20 years, so it's good to get into something new and significant. 
Um, so I've had to do a bit of remedial work on brushing up on transmission system basics, modeling the nodes, the lines, uh, three phase power flow basics and so on. Um, what's occupied the research time has been gleaning um, fin grid data from QGIS related files. So I've got some data based on a master's thesis by Nina Hellisto from who's now at VTT. Um, she did a very good master's thesis a few years ago and that gives some data. Um, it doesn't give generation data, but the generation data I've been able to get from the marketing authority um, website. And then the other th sort of data source potentially that's come up actually just a couple of months ago was a 57 bus model of the Nordic system that's been used in Sweden and a doctoral thesis by Dimitrios Zografos, Zog uh, I guess from Greece. Um, and that's that was very interesting as well. The only issue with that 57 bus model, it was probably very good for Sweden and did a good enough job of sort of modeling Finland to the east and, and Norway to the west, but it might not be quite good enough for something that's Finnish, Finland centric, if you like, when we're sort of modeling nuclear in the south of Finland, but it's a good place to start. Um, so there are two paths, ways of developing this thing, and probably I'll go for the second, uh, the, the picture on the right. So starting with this, well, actually, I'm not going to, I am, I've almost impl implemented now the eight node network, and then we'll probably move to the Finnish um, 400 kV network. And then we'll use that 57, the, the part, parts of the 57 uh, node network that are not Finland to model Sweden and Norway, if that's necessary to sort of do a, a little bit better modeling of what happens um, on the other side of those connections. So we could end up with a, an entire finished transmission uh, model with some representation of the neighboring countries, but it'll be a value judgment where we stop because what we need to have is a sufficient model of the transmission network with respect to the behavior of a nuclear power station, both how the power station influences the grid and the grid influences the nuclear power station. So we have to keep that in mind so we don't sort of overdevelop. And obviously the more nodes you have in simulating not models, that slows things down. So we've got to sort of find a balance there. That's work in progress. So this is this QGIS, it's open source software that, that just happened that uh, a reasonably good model of Finland was implemented in that software. So I was encouraged by Nina Hedlisto to get familiar with it and get the data out of it. I'm trying to make a database basically of Finland um, for use within the project part uh, by the project part partners. And at the moment, it's just an Excel. Um, we're dealing with about 500 nodes, which is manageable in Excel, but maybe we'll use some sort of other software uh, to represent that data eventually. This is just showing an IEEE standard network, just showing that the main power system components are available and work in Simulink uh, or Simscape and MATLAB. This is the 57 node network that I was talking about, and there's a link there to the doctorate that uses it. I'm not sure who developed the model in, in the first place, but it's a pretty nice model, but it's a bit sparse in Finland. And when we get down to the south and where we're, we're dealing with there, for example, Luis has got a 110 kV bus bar and a, and a, and a 400 kV bus bar and, and so we need a bit more sophisticated sophistication quite where on the parts of the network that are electrically near the nuclear power station we're involved with. So it'd be nice to start simple and we will. Um, this is probably where we'll go with the 400 kV network. The question is do we model just what uh, should we model the new connections because FinGrid are strengthening their network both to the north and doing their best to the west as well. Hello Sweden. Um, but because the wind's going to be, wind generation is mostly going to be put in the north and we don't want to end up in a situation like Germany. Um, and that's of course everything 400 kV down to 110 kV and half of the 110 kV is opened, owned by the distribution companies in Finland and that would be too much detail. So for the conclusion for this second work package and, and the COSI project to model the 400 kV grid of Finland and in, in any necessary sections of lower voltage transmission basically to do with the connectivity to the nuclear power stations. We've got the data for that. It'll be a little bit tedious doing it in Simulink, but it'll be a great tool both for this project and probably for other purposes 
um, looking at the flexibility that we've been talking about earlier in the seminar, um, really the impact and what nuclear uh, can offer that and what will be demanded of it and so on. Check modeling with another platform will be very necessary, both also because we might have to eventually get this out of MATLAB to something that's more, you know, because you'd require MATLAB licenses to run it, which universities and research institutes have, but it's pretty expensive for industry sometimes. Simulations and case studies, of course. So that's everything from me. Thank you very much. And I just want to add. To Thank you very much, John. Thank you, John. And one point that the next year plan is. Oh, sorry, my voice now it's better, I guess. Yeah. Next uh, next year plan, it's the regarding to a study using this platform to a study different events like the uh, fault OPC open uh, phase uh, and all these things to find out is there any threat for reliability of the or the uh, working of the power plant that's uh, we cannot see without this co-simulation and with co-simulation platform, we can study that with more, you know, accurate. Oh, thanks for giving the context, Poria. Yeah, that's that's true. And partly what we'll be doing on the grid side is also isolating the most likely faults that are li most likely to have an impact so we can narrow down to sort of the co-simulate co the things that are most likely to happen um, and be of impact. Thank you. And uh, John, I have a question for you. The the model that you are developing now, will that be uh, like open access afterwards or what's the plan? Um, I would think so and that we're trying our best to use data that's publicly available. As you're probably aware it's, it's not easy to get the actual data um, for open source uh, presentation or even even just as researchers we, we sometimes get access to for example FinGrid data as researchers for a specific project for a specific time but um, that level but that's why I was very happy to see that 57 node network and the data was available and it seems that's okay for open source and also this um, slightly scaled down data from with a bit more detail for Finland from Nina Hellisto. Um, those are the two main sources and also data from generation data from the marketing authority. That's it's, it's available from the, via the Internet, so I presume it's available for open source. So yeah, I, I, we'll really try to keep, um, you know, a, a good data set available for for wider use once we've got it together. Um, we'll have to check, of course, with you know very carefully. The non, uh, when, when it gets into the nuclear and the generation data, that's a lot more sensitive potentially because obviously competitors want to you know reverse engineer the <laughs> the algorithms generators use for dispatching to various markets and things like that. And we, we we've got to be extremely careful there. Um, but you know we'd be running different different scenarios, sort of. At, the four seasons, for example, a low demand summer scenario and, and you know, and using that, I, I presume basically as a steady state sort of thing going into the co simulation model for our purposes. Um, so it's, it's kind of. Yeah, I, I think there should be some representative load scenarios and generation scenarios, but probably not. Like time series data made available that would give what's really happening from individual generators. I think that would be a bit too much to expect. Thank you. Any other questions? To either John or Poria? I do understand that it must be a very difficult job to to get all these things connected, just getting these different parts to sort of talk to each other. And, and then there are also the security issues with the uh, difficulties in obtaining data from the plants, etc. Yeah, yeah, that's those are very valid comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, I can say that uh, the platform uh, itself, it will be open access, even the first version of that, it's not uh, that much complete last year is finished. We uh, put that is as a uh, as a reference in the all this open access uh, reports, and we will do that in the end of this year. The new version of that as well. 
the data uh, whatever we get from the public we will uh, put as a you know gather them and put as a one uh, data sets available for everyone uh, but the data comes from the specific company for example the fortum uh, or if we could uh, get some more data, detailed data from Fingrid, absolutely we cannot uh, share them. But the existing, for example, transmission system, I think it could be, it's possible to uh, share most part of that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments that you would like to, to yes, make? Yes, you have one, Monica. Björn Engström has raised his hand. Okay, so please, Björn. Yes, okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Uh, I was wondering, could you say something about why uh, you are not modeling everything in, in Simulink and why you have, have used this uh, coupling scheme? Uh, because, because uh, first of all, this co-simulation, the idea is developed that each domain expert used to one a specific software, and that software is designed for that specific domain. For example, this Opros, now it's very popular in the operation and planning, even training new operator for nuclear power plants. So they uh, detailly model everything on that. And uh, so it's the, again, creating such a huge software in another uh, software like MATLAB, it's maybe not a good idea. Even for me, MATLAB simulating is not the best choice for power system. Uh, our background is power system. Uh, the, me and John working here, but there are some people from the Opros developing working in the COSI as well. Uh, but uh, the thing is, uh, the co-simulation platform aim to, we don't change whatever they are using. For example, if you look at the Nordic uh, power system, uh, the Finnish part, it's simulated using PSSE, but the Swedish part mostly use the power factory. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's my, uh, the people can uh, correct me. That is so, not correct. That is not correct. We use PCC as well. Okay. Uh, but anyway, both are in the fine one uh, area domain. So we cannot force the power plant things to change all their, uh, their work coming to the MATLAB. And in that case, we need to create a, such a huge program in MATLAB that has a good ability. I think when the VTT and uh, Fortum started to make Opros years ago, they have a such huge ambitious uh, aim that they have power system in the Opros as well. But this, it's not, it's never upgraded to new model, to new, uh, for example, there is no uh, voltage source converter there. There is no uh, asymmetrical uh, simulation there. So it's limit all the, we should use the existing uh, package, but allow them work together. Okay, thank you. And if I can, I can add some comments here, except for that, because I was in the project a couple of years, that the idea that why we try to integrate all of these different systems is that, that that is something new that we try to study in this project that if there are some faults or, or incident in the grid side or if there are some incident in the power plant that how for example the incident outside the in the high voltage grid that if there are faults there how this kind of event uh, spread inside the power plant that how we can see it in the approach and what kind of impact it will have in, in the uh, in thermomechanical system and, and so on. And also vice versa, that that if there are some incident in the, the inside power plant, that how we can see that how this spread uh, outside of the power plant in the high voltage grid, that, that uh, this, this kind of things is the so-called original idea 
to, to uh, study in this so-called co-simulation model to, to, to the extent what is, is possible and what is possible to reach with these different types of, of simulation, simulator if we try to integrate them together. Do you have any example of insights that you have gained which you wouldn't have gained um, except for this if you if you didn't have this um, simultaneous simulation it's a little bit early to say we're still building the uh, especially the transmission grid side of the models not yet ready for really giving any firm results it's plan to uh, continue in that uh, study of uh, that so yeah exactly it's the early to say just we finished to modeling uh, the elect internal electrical system of the one nuclear power plant that wasn't exist before uh, in the detail to even a study at least we couldn't find from that the uh, operator and uh, now the next year plan it's the the uh, study the different fault. Actually, we want to uh, study the critical uh, events in the pure electrical system and uh, find the critical one and do some co-simulation in the critical one and find uh, what's the impact of this event in the internal uh, thermomechanical system. For example, how much the flow uh, decrease and this flow has influence, uh, flow has influence or not, or temperature, what change it's happening. This is not a study before because there wasn't any uh, toolbox for that study. Uh, 